for a lot of people, the best part of Thanksgiving is the turkey sandwiches the next day. But what do you do with all those little bits and pieces of leftover turkey? I mean, I love my dogs, but they're not getting all of that. That'd be a crime. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to take those little bits and pieces and make a classic fall comfort food, a terrific turkey pot pie. Are you ready? The kitchen is now open. Hi, I'm Deb, and this is my kitchen. Family is built at the dinner table, and food traditions are a big part of that. So on this channel, we cover everything from recipes to cooking skills to tips on making your dinner table the family center of your home so that you can develop your own food traditions. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Come on in, let's cook up something good. For your terrific turkey pot pie, the ingredients you'll need are two individual pie crusts. I'm using two discs I made just like in the impeccable pie crust video. Two cups of turkey pieces, both light and dark meat in varying sizes. Two 15 ounce cans of mixed vegetables. One 15 ounce can of whole kernel corn with all of these vegetables fully drained. A half an onion diced small one can of condensed cream of potato soup, two cups of turkey gravy, I'm using gravy just like in the gut-busting turkey gravy video, and one teaspoon of seasoned salt. The tools you'll need are a cutting board, an aluminum foil lined cookie or baking sheet, a large knife, a large mixing bowl, a one cup liquid measure, a one cup dry measure, a one and a half quart saucepan, a large spatula, a small spatula, a one teaspoon measuring spoon, a 10 inch pie pan, a rolling pin, a paring knife, a medium large strainer, and aluminum foil for tenting your pie. The first thing we're going to do is drain our vegetables. So let's go ahead and dump them in the strainer, give the can a good knock to make sure that nothing is stuck inside. And once we've dumped all three cans in, we're just going to let them sit and drain while we work on the next part of our pie. While our vegetables are thoroughly draining, this is the perfect time to chop up the onion. Now, I've already chopped mine, and I want you to notice that they're chopped quite small. That's on purpose because this is the only raw element in the entire pie. We wanna make sure it's small enough to cook thoroughly by the time the pie is done. So we have those. And then we also have our turkey. I've already chopped this up as well. This is everything that I could pull off of the carcass, the legs, the thighs, the wings, everywhere I could find leftover meat on my turkey. And you can see some of it's kind of small, some of this stuff, but there's also some pretty nice chunks in here. I like that because you really want to have that sensation of biting down on a nice piece of turkey in your pie. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring over my bowl. Got onions everywhere. And we're going to measure up a couple of cups of this turkey. And when I say two cups, I mean, I'm not leveling them off. I mean, it's kind of a rounded cup, but more or less two cups. There we go. Now you see, I still have more leftover turkey. Not to worry, because I'm gonna set that aside because I've got another simple idea for you for a great Thanksgiving leftover that we'll talk about on another day. So I'm saving that. And grab my vegetables and they're going in too. Well drained so they don't dribble on my floor and in they go. The next element is the gravy and for that, I'll see you over at the stove. While we move to work on our gravy, the first thing I did was start preheating the oven. So it is heating to 425 degrees. Now, for the gravy, I scooped up two cups of our leftover gut-busting turkey gravy that we had on Thanksgiving, and I heated them through thoroughly. And then, using the small spatula, I added the entire can of condensed 
cream of potato soup and went ahead and finished heating it, you can see that it's added some nice big chunks of potato, which is pretty nice, and also added a richness to our gravy. So now we're ready to head back, finish our filling, and assemble our pie. All right, we're going to finish putting together our filling. Um, we didn't add our onions earlier, so we put those in. And then our gravy. Now, I know the recipe I gave you said two to three cups of gravy. For now, we have two cups and our cream of potato soup. I've re, um, what's the word I want? Reserved, <laughs> that's the word. I've reserved one cup of gravy in case I think I need it, but I wanna get this mixed in first and see what it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and mix all of these ingredients together. And what I'm looking for is I want everything to look nice and juicy, which it does. We don't need any more gravy um, because if it gets too great, too much gravy, when you slice it open, it just goes bleh, 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 everywhere, which uh, it may even at that with as much as we have here because this is pretty juicy. Okay, the last ingredient is some seasoned salt. I've got one and a half teaspoons measured out here, but I'm gonna go easy and taste it as I go just to make sure I don't over season. So that's about a teaspoon in there. Get that thoroughly mixed in. And then give it a little bit of a taste. Oh, that's good. I don't want any more salt in it. Um, if somebody wants more salt at the table, they can certainly add it to their serving. But I think we're good to go as is, about one teaspoon. Now we're to the important step of building our crust. Now, you could use a store-bought crust. Not those frozen hubcaps, okay? Promise me you won't do that. But you could get by if you need to with those ones that are rolled up. They're in the deli section by the biscuits and cinnamon rolls and stuff in the, in the pop and fresh cans. But really, a great pie screams for a homemade pie crust. And I've supplied both in the description and at the end of the video links to the impeccable pie crust, a full tutorial, as well as a little shorty, the impeccable pie crust in two minutes and 16 seconds to walk you through the process. For today's pie, I've already rolled out our crusts and I'll show you how I sized them. This is grandma's 10 inch pie pan. This baby is about 75 years old and anytime I can use something that came down through the family, it's one of those traditions again and I love it. Now you can see I've got about an inch of clearance all the way around. That's what we're looking for as we roll out our pie. And I've done that with both of our discs. I'm going to remove the top sheet of paper. I'm going to pick this crust up in one hand, move in grandma's pie plate here, switch to my dominant hand. Are you ready? One, two, three. Well, that's not centered, but that other piece of paper will help save the day as we go ahead and get that as centered as possible in our pie plate. And you can see it broke a little bit, but we're just going to press it back together again. Not really a major deal. Okay, I'm going to push this in, making sure there are no bubbles underneath our crust. And then off comes that second sheet of paper. Now, if we were making just a regular crust that we were filling, this is the point where I crimp it but we're not crimping it yet because we have to wait until we add the final crust. So the next step is to put in this beautiful, yummy filling we made. And yes, all of that goes in. Now, if you don't have access to a 10 inch pie tin or pie plate, this might be a little much. So um, you might wanna hold back a little bit or 
pour that over some mashed potatoes. That'd be yummy. If you have too much to fill your pie. Okay, there we go. It's kind of spreading it out. And then we're going to take the second crust, peel off that top paper, and we're going to do that flipperoony thing again. Wish me luck that I get it pretty well centered. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, it needs to scoot over a little, I can see. Kind of line it up. I can see where the edges of my lower one are, and I'm trying to kind of line it up as best I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull off that top paper. There we go. Now, to finish the edge, we're going to wrap the top crust around the bottom crust so that we're encasing it inside. What we're trying to do is seal the two crusts together. And I'm just going to spin this around and we're going to work our way all the way around the pie. Just rolling the top one over the bottom one. I can feel it inside. You'll be able to feel it with your fingers that you're getting both of them. You can see the edge is kind of uneven. Don't worry, we'll fix it. Ooh, that's really thin right there, but we'll fix that too. No worries. Almost all the way around. Now over here, we have a lot of crust. Wasn't exactly even, but that's going to help us when we get to fixing this thin spot. Okay, so we've gone all the way around and rolled the upper around the lower. Now, like I said, it's really thin here, but it's really heavy here. So we're going to carefully pinch the edge and gently coax some of that extra dough around to where it's thin. And we're going to go the, do the same thing going the other direction, continuing to seal that edge. A little bit thick there. That's a good thing because it needs to come over to this thin spot. We're close. I can feel it. You'll just feel it with your hands. You can, um, as much as seeing it, you really feel the consistency of the edge of your crust. Still a little thick right here, so I'm going to work some of that around to the thinner areas take it back to being in preschool, playing with Play-Doh. It's not a whole lot different. I'll just get rid of all this extra stuff that fell off the edge. And now we're down to the final step, or the next to final step, of doing the crimping. I'm going to use the rope technique on this one because it's easy and I think it's beautiful. If you haven't watched the tutorials, you'll, um, I'll just show you really quickly. This one is about pinching your thumb against the side of your bent index finger, just like this. And you continue to turn your pan, and you just work your way all the way around. Now, you might think, gosh, this looks awfully thin, but as it bakes, this crust does rise up a little bit and thicken up, so if it looks a little like it's paper thin, don't worry, it'll be okay. In fact, if it's a little thin, it actually has more definition to the rope design, so I kind of like it that way. Almost there. Some of this is just a little dry. It's a little crumbly. It's been under the lights for a while. Okay. I said next to last step, because really the last step is taking our paring knife 
and cutting some vent holes in the top. Now you can just poke, 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 whatever you want, or you can try to get a little bit um, of a design in if you want. I usually will cut a couple about an inch long and then the same thing go in the other direction. So I have four of them like so. And then I'll come out and do ones in between that are about half that size. It just makes a little design, nothing fancy. If you're creative and you can come up with something cool, go for it. But this is ready now to put in the oven. So I'll see you over there. All right, I have my pie on this foil covered pan. Um, it's on the pan to catch any gravy that bubbles over and it's foil covered to make it for ease of cleanup. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and then I'm gonna take another piece of foil and make a tent for our pie. All I'm doing is going like this with my hand underneath to round out that foil a bit. And we're going to cover the pie to keep it from over browning. I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for 50 minutes. And then I'm gonna go put my feet up for a while and then we'll come back and check it. Okay, our 50 minute timer is about to go off. In fact, there it is. And what I'm going to do now is pull off that tent we put on earlier because it's time to let this pie brown. And looking at it, I think we should set this timer for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back and give it another check. Okay, we're set. I think our 20 minute timer is going off. Yep, there it is. And that looks like it's beautifully browned. We're gonna pull it out into the good light here and give it a check. We wanna see bubbling, which I definitely see, and steam coming out of the vents there. And that's a nice golden brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit. I think I'll pull it off the pan to allow a little air circulation here. And we're gonna let it cool for about a half an hour and then we'll be ready to slice it open. All right, our pie has been cooling for about 30 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it open. And I'm anticipating that this is gonna be pretty juicy. Yeah, so I'm ready with, with a, a spoon as well as my uh, pie picker upper, whatever you call that thing. And I'm gonna put it in a bowl rather than a plate. If you put a little less gravy in it, you could serve it on a plate as well. It's kind of nice in a bowl though, because then I like to take and chop up my crust and mix it all together and I get bits of crust and, and gravy and veggies and turkey all the way through, it's awesome. So here we go gonna be messy. Whoa. Yeah, there's all the rest of the innards. Let's get that in there. Look at all those veggies and that turkey. That's beautiful. All right. Like I said, I like to kind of chop it up. So I love getting those bits of crispy crust in there. All right, let's give this baby a taste. Oh, hot. There, make it a small taste. Mmm, I got a bite of turkey. Mmm, that's amazing. If you make one of these, please send me a picture of yours on Facebook or Twitter. I'd love to see your pie. In the meantime, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and share it far and wide so we can help as many families as possible. And remember, family is built at the dinner table, and if you feed them, they will come.